Welcome to the Mechanics of Material Lab. Today we are going to demonstrate the pressure vessel experiment. The objective should be to calculate the axial stress and hoop stress from a cylindrical pressure vessel and then uh, from the strains compute the stress and convert the stress in uh, multiple directions. So uh, we will be focusing mainly on the experimental part and you will know the theory from the lab hand. Okay. So, in terms of the instrumentation, this is what our uh, pressure vessel. Now, you can see the chamber inside this this middle. We have a cylindrical pressure vessel, thin walled, and it's made of aluminum. A few things uh, I need to show you here. Uh, let's start with this left side. We have a knob at the very left corner. Once this knob is open that means in its outer position like this the way it is right now that is demonstrating a biaxial state of stress so it should be able to capture both the axial and the hoop stress if you close this close the knob this now will replicate the state of a uniaxial stress state we don't want that we want a biaxial stress state so let's uh, put it in a outer position Okay, so this is in the outer position and to build the pressure inside the vessel, we have a hand pump on the right corner. So if you pump it up, it should build up some pressure and that pressure value is shown in this uh, display. Okay, now you can see if I pump it up, it's still not building up the pressure. So to build up the pressure inside, you have to close this knob at the bottom corner. Okay. If I close the knob and then pump it up, it is supposed to build up the pressure. All right. Now, once the pressure is building up, there will be some sort of strains on the on the vessel, and those strains we have to capture in multiple orientations. So we have different strain gauge at different angles. Okay. So basically we have five separate angles where the strain gauges are connected starting from zero, then the second is a 30 degree, then a 45 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree. Okay, so we have five locations for the strain gauge. Like, let's uh, show you the strain gauges. You can see uh, on the top surface here, this is the zero degree gauge connected with a red, red wire. Okay. Just uh, after there, I have another gauge, 30 degree with a different color. The next is 45 degree, then we have 60, and at the very bottom, we have a yellow colored gauge connected that is the 90 degree. All right, so although we're saying we have five uh, angles, we basically have uh, 10 strain gauge. For each angle, we have two strain gauge uh, side by side, it's anti symmetric. So, the reason why we are using two gauge, we will get the data uh, from average of these two strain gauge. If there is any, any bending or any sort of noise, uh, to eliminate all those bending effect and noise, we are taking the average value from the two gauges. Okay, so just remember we'll be uh, getting the strain data from five channels. All right. Now this strain gauge is, is, is the similar kind of strain gauge we are using all, all through the lab. So to record the strains, we have to connect it with some sort of strain indicator. Okay. So instead of using a blue box that we normally use, we have a separate kind of strain indicator that is coming with the machine. So the purpose is same, it just records the strain uh, from the different gauges. Okay. And this wire shown on the machine is uh, being connected with the strain indicator at the at the back side. Okay, so everything is done. We just have to use it. So to record the strains, you can turn it on. So you have a on-off switch. You can just turn it on and give some time for the display to come up. And uh, here, what we have. Now, very important thing that is we have to use the same machine for the 
uh, strain recording. We have FL130 is the strain uh, is the pressure vessel setup. So we have to make it FL130 on the display as well. Okay. So right now this is on FL130. So we are okay. Let's see what happens if we push it there. So we have different other uh, type of connections FL152. But our goal is to get fixed on FL130. Okay. All right. So right now we are at zero pressure state, and we don't have any uh, uh, strain. So we should be at zero strain. So all the five channels that is shown here, this one number one, two, three, four, five. This represents strain gauge at five angles. So let's say number one. That means we're getting the strain data from the zero degree gauge. So right now we have number one is showing some data 3.2 micro strain. So that means we are having 3.2 micro strain strain data coming from the zero degree gauge that is connected with the radio wire. Okay, so that's how we uh, take the data. Okay, so to do the experiment, I can see in your lab handout we have to increase the pressure inside starting from zero bar to maximum 30 bar okay so don't cross uh, above 30 bar so that's the cutoff limit we're trying to maintain the again the elasticity we don't want to cross the elastic limit so let's say 30 bar is our maximum pressure target and for each uh, step of the pressure we want to record whatever strains we have so few things are, is important here. We will check the linearity in data. As the pressure goes high, we should have higher strains. And also, you can uh, see for different strain gauge at different angles, the strain value should also be different. Okay. So let me show you uh, one uh, pressure data. So let's pump it up. So let's say I'm going to 10 bar. Okay. So pump it up. So right now I'm at 10 bar so for 10 bar uh, let's come to the strain indicator so these are our strains so you should give some time to get things stabilized before re 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 uh, reading out the data okay so you see here the strain is changing we have the first strain gauge and I mean that means the zero degree gauge which is 24.8 uh, 45 degree gauge is showing uh, 96 and number 5 which is 90 degrees showing the maximum 182.5 so the strain is varying with the gaze location and also let's increase to 20 bar 20 bar similarly you record the strain check the uh, linearity the relation between the pressure and strain and go maximum uh, maximum 30 bar okay so right now I'm at 30 bar and whatever strains we have, you record the strains and the next job would be, okay, you have these strains, now you use the theory for the pressure vessel theory, uh, use the axial stress and hoop stress theory, we should be able to know what is the dimensions, what is the material property of the, of the vessel. Everything should be there in the lab handout. So use the formula for axial and hoop stress. Find these two stresses. Then go to the Mohr circle, put these two values, and uh, find the stresses. And then orient the uh, Mohr circle for all these different angular positions and find the stress for all those ang angular positions. And from the stress, then use the 3D hooks law to convert into a string. So that would be a theoretical strain, and whatever you have here is the experimental strain. Then you compare these two and find uh, the percentage of difference and the accuracy of the test. Okay. All right. Now, once the test is done, we have to bring everything back to zero. So you can release this knob. Okay. So this black right corner we had the knob. You can release the knob. So to release all the pressure. So it will release all the pressure and the display right now shows we have zero bar. Okay, so all the pressure is released. So all the strains 
are also uh, taken back. So we have pretty much zero data in almost all the five string cases. All right. So this is what uh, is the experiment, and then go back to your lab handout, check the uh, dimensions and material property, and use the formulas Mohr circle and 3D hooks law to convert uh, into strings, and then compare.